Okay, so this is a uh, second order differential equations video on substitutions uh, for x. The idea of this is that you're given a substitution and a given a ridiculously horrible equation like this one here, uh, something that we can't solve, but by replacing all the x's with u's, um, we can turn this thing into uh, a much nicer form, one that we can solve. Um, and that that's good, I suppose. Um, Doing this, this substitution is probably one of the hardest substitutions you can do in, in maths. Um, so the reason it's hard is because you haven't just got rid of these x squares and x's by just plugging these things in. That's that's the easy bit. The hard bit is getting rid of the dx's from the bottom of these differentials. And computing those can be um, can be tricky. But it's okay as long as you learn and follow the rules of differentiation um, and don't miss anything out. Let's show you what I mean. So, we know you can replace that x there and that x squared there. So let's focus on trying to replace this uh, this dy dx for u. So we're trying to work out what dy dx is in terms of y and u. So the problem is we can't differentiate it to x. So what we do is we change the differential. We change the dx to be a du. Problem is we can't just do that, right? We have to times by du dx to keep things fair. This is the chain rule. Here the du's essentially cancel out and give us dy over dx. Problem is we've still got a dx here. That's okay though because we can compute that using this thing. x is equal to e to the u. Um, there's a couple ways of computing this. So you can either just do dx du and get e to the u back here and then flip it to get what you need which is du dx. That's one way of computing it. Or you can just take this and directly differentiate it and get 1 is equal to uh, e to the u uh, du dx. That's the implicit differentiation where we differentiate this side to x and then differentiate this side to u but times it by du dx. The same sort of thing we're doing here, just there. Either way, you end up with this turning back into this when we move this to the other side and get e to the minus u is equal to du dx. I prefer the first way, but sometimes you'll see me doing it in the second way. Um, so... Anyway, it depends on the situation sometimes which one is easiest. Either way, we can compute this fairly easily, and we can plug that in over there. So dy uh, dx is equal to dy du uh, times by e to the minus u. So we found our first substitution. That bit isn't too bad. Uh, we need to now work out what the d2y dx squared is in terms of y's and u's. So we use this to help us. Let's start a new line up here. So d2y dx squared is really the second differential of dy, sorry, of y. So you differentiate once, and then you differentiate the same thing again, right? So let's plug in what we know dy dx is, this thing down here, dy over du, uh, e to the minus u, that gives us some of the uh, things you need. Obviously this dx is still there, so it's going to swap that out for a du. Of course you can't just swap out a du, you've got to use a chain rule. So you've got to times by du dx so that the u is cancelled and the x is still in the same place it was before really. We know what du dx is, so let's do that bit. Uh, du dx we said was, uh, what was it? Yeah, it was here. It was minus u, so e to the minus u. Now let's differentiate this bit here using the um, using the product rule. So we've got to do d du of dy du and then leave this guy alone. And then we've got add on, leave the dy du alone and d d du of e to the minus u. That was all in a big bracket, that's that bit there. And it's all still times by e to the minus u. Now you might be able to work out these things straight away. I'm just trying to break it up for this um, this video so you can see what's going on. Um, I might go, oh, we know what du, dy, du is. It's uh, d2y, du squared. We've differentiated y by du twice. So there's two d's and there's two du's. That's why we've got the squared for the d and the squared in front of the, sorry, after d and after the du. Uh, and then just here, dy, du. The differential of e to the minus u is e to the minus u times by the differential of this, which is a minus 1, so change that sign to a minus. 
uh, and leave this bracket in because we haven't expanded that bracket quite yet. Times anything by uh, e to the minus u, e to the minus 2u there, because e to the minus u, the uh, minus u is essentially add together, don't they? And there we've got it. So that whole thing was computing the d2y dx squared term. Now that is the term that's hard to compute. That's what makes um, this substitution for x difficult. Um, once you've done that, it's really downhill from here. So if I now plug these two things and uh, our original substitution into this equation, this equation should pretty much pop out. Let's just see. So this equation here, I'm going to take my x squared. Well, the x squared is I'm going to plug in e to the u, so that's x squared. My t d2y dx squared, I'm going to plug in this thing, so big bracket. This is my replacement for um, my second definition of y, switch x. And then we've got plus uh, 6x, so 6 lots of uh, e to the u. And then we put in the dy dx. dy dx is this thing. So dy du times by e to the minus u. And then we just add 4y. We haven't, got to, we haven't got to change that because that y has no x term in. And that's all still equal to 0. Um, and then something quite nice should happen. Um, here this is e to the 2u. Which we times it by e to the minus 2u. Uh, that cancels out, right? And we just get d2y du squared. And then here e to the 2u times by e to the minus 2u is again 1, cancels out. We're left with minus dy du. Uh, here we have plus 6, um, lots of this, but e to the u and e to the minus u are cancelling out, so it's just 6 dy du. And then here plus 4y. Okay, just type the last bit. We've got um, 5 there in the middle, I suppose. 6 minus 1. Uh, and that gives us um, the thing transformed into this. So, when you're going through this section here, it's important that you don't um, don't lose things. Quite often, what will happen, you'll see, is people will, um, at this point here, drop the du dx. Uh, just be so focused on doing this whole bracket here, they forget about times in by uh, du dx, and you end up with the same thing but missing the du uh, to the minus 1 and if that happens the end and doesn't sort of fall into place it will sort of end up being still things in front of these d2y's du's. Um, the other thing people do wrong is only oh, differentiate one of these terms, uh, don't use the product rule and do differentiate of one then differentiate of other. I would suggest you try to write out quite formally to begin with so you can see where you're using the chain rule, where you're using the product rule. Um, and then maybe start skipping steps as you've done it like 10 times and you really know what you're doing. Until then, writing it out can be very useful. Uh, these questions are normally followed up with a now solve this and hence give your solution for y in terms of x. So um, let's just finish this question off. If that was the uh, question, let's uh, solve this original equation by solving the second one. Uh, so let's solve this guy. Um, I'm going to skip and say that we can do that very easily. We can find the uh, two uh, roots of the uh, corresponding equation and get that it's a e to the minus 4u plus b e to the minus u. That's what we'd get if we solve that. Problem here is that we've got uh, u's and not x's. But that's okay because we always said that x was equal to e to the u. So we could rewrite this as being y is equal to a over e to the u to the power of 4 plus b over e to the u. And then replace those e to the u's with x's. And that gives you your solution uh, for that original horrible differential equation that is uh, just up here off the screen. Let me just slide down a second. Yep, so we've now solved this one and given us a general solution to that differential equation. Good luck with this.